so welcome everybody. Um, I apologize, but this video did not upload correctly last night. Matter of fact, 10 hours later, still trying to upload. So I'm going to just redo it and hopefully it'll work better this time. So we're starting with question number two and we're looking at different ways to identify uh, functions as linear or nonlinear. So we just need to know are they linear or are they nonlinear? So in this case, on number two, we're we have the equation y is equal to 2x plus 1, and we need to complete the table, right? So all we have to do is substitute the x value in to the equation, to, into the function, and then come up with the y value. So the x value <coughs> will be substituted in. Uh, if we do negative 2, we have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4 plus 1, will give us negative 3. If we use negative 1, it's, ne it's 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, plus 1 will give us negative 1. 0, 2 times 0 is 0, so we just have the plus 1, that is our y-intercept. And then 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times uh, 4 plus 1 is 5. So we would then plot those. If you look here, this is a table completed. Let's see if we can get the focus a little bit. Uh, maybe I can move it out. All right, there we go. You see the table is completed here, and then our graph is a straight line. So the answer is yes, this is a linear function, and the rate of change is 2. The rate of change is always found right here in front of the uh, x variable, all right? Our next question, we have a different function, is y is equal to x to the third. And we want to complete that table and then see, then, then graph it and see if it is a linear function. So if we put negative two into y is equal to x to the third, we're going to get negative eight because negative two times negative two is a positive four, times the negative 2 is a negative 8. Negative 1 is going to be negative 1. 0 will just be 0 cubed, which is 0. 1 cubed will be 1 again, and 2 cubed will be positive 8. When we graph that, it looks like this. Right? And you'll notice that it comes up, and the rate of change changes between each, between each coordinate pair. Right? So this is a function. But it is not linear, all right? It's a nonlinear function. So we're going to look at all the functions that we've looked at in this chapter so far. We have y is equal to 4x, which is the perimeter of a square. We have y is equal to x squared, which is the area of a square. We have y is equal to x squared plus 2. We have y is equal to 2x plus 1. And we have y is equal to x cubed, all right? The initial value of these. Uh, is going to be 0, right? 0 because we don't have a plus b. Here we have a 2 and a plus b, so that's going to be initial value is going to be 2. Here we have a plus 1, so initial value is going to be plus 1, right? And here we don't have an initial value, so it's going to be 0. The rate of change, anywhere you have a exponent, the rate of change is going to vary, right? Anywhere you have an exponent, the rate of change is going to vary. Anywhere you don't have an exponent, the rate of change is going to be constant. It's always a number in front of the variable, your independent variable, which is x. Right? These are the equation forms. y is equal to mx. And this is also y is equal to mx. Even though you don't see an m here, it's still there because you have the hidden coefficient of 1. Right? So anytime we don't have... Like even here, it's an mx cubed, right? Because it's 1 times x cubed, right? So these are the, the equations. And then we need to know if it's linear or nonlinear. Well, here we have a linear equation. And here we have a linear equation where we don't have an exponent. So those are linear. <clears throat> Anything that has an exponent is nonlinear. So when we look at this chart and they want to know, in the equation y equal mx plus b. So that's this one right here. Does m represent the initial value or the rate of change? 
Well, we know that m is right in front of the x, so that's the coefficient of x. That means it's the rate of change, and b is your initial value. Your initial value always includes the sign in front of it. All right, so it's always plus b or minus b. All right. Now, the y. When we ask ourselves why that's true, well, it's because the y value, right? For, to find the y value, you have to multiply the rate of change times the x value, right? And then add the initial value, right? So we multiply the, the rate of change times the x value, and then we add the initial value, all right? So according to the observations so far, what equations are forms? Uh, what equation form or forms define a linear function? Well, we can look back up here again. And I think my thing just froze. There we go. Is y equal mx or y equal mx plus b? Y equal mx is simply y equal mx plus b, but with a zero. So you don't need to write it. Y equal mx plus zero just, is just y equal mx. All right. Why do you think this is so? Uh, that would be because in both equations, the amount y changes compared to the amount x changes is always a constant uh, value. Right? If you look up here in this one, when y changes by one, x change uh, when x changes by one, y changes by four. Right? And here, whenever x changes by one, y changes by two. Right? So it's going to increase two every time. Even if it's even if this is one, you get two times one plus one, that gives you three, right? So in this, if we go up to two, two times two plus one is five, so the initial, the change is still two, all right? And then the last question, try it another way. This one, uh, you want to predict whether each equation is a linear function or not. The, this is a linear function because 0.5 times one is one half, right? Plus two gives us two and a half. If I raise it up to two, 0.5 times two is one, plus two equals three, right? So it goes up by 0.5 each time. This one is gonna be whatever it is cubed, right? So one cubed is one times 0.5 is 0.5, but two cubed is eight times 0.5 is four, right? So this is a nonlinear. And if you do three cubed, you get uh, 27 times 0.5 is 13 and a half. So we go one, four, 13 and a half. It's obviously going to be a curve. All right. So those are the answers to that. And I'm going to upload this video as quickly as I can so we can talk about it in class today. All right. Thank you for listening.